Uh, this is Mike Harrell, and uh, I'm back again today with C. Wayne Wilson. And he's had a whole lot of experiences, uh, more than we can cover today. But uh, today we're going to cover a couple of really interesting ones. Uh, I guess the first one he wants to talk about is uh, when uh, a little Sasquatch baby being born in uh, Christmas Eve. So you want to want to tell us about that one and a little backstory to it? Well, it it, it happens. I would say it was around four or five o'clock on Christmas Eve this past year. I think it was, yeah, it was this past year. And, uh, you know, I'm sitting in the living room. I'm not, you know, I'm not paying any attention. I'm watching TV. And then all of a sudden I hear this big rumbling in my garage. And I said, I believe they done drug something through the garage. I said, I need to go out there and see what the noise was. I go out there and I see what the noise was. and um, when I look at the, you know, I look around, I don't see nothing, but I smell the smell. And it smells like candy. I mean, it's just candy smell all over the garage. It's all over the yard. And, and so I let my dogs out. They come back in. They're smelling the smell, too. They're trying to figure out where it was. But when I got them back in, I started trying to figure out where the smell went from. So I start going to, toward the woods, and I trace it, and it's down in the woods. And then I hear this moaning down there. And it was this, it was this moaning. It was like, uh, it sounded like some, to me, my original thought was they drug a deer down there and was killing it. And the deer was down there dying, basically, is what I thought. It was probably an hour later. Something came to me. And I don't know how it came. I can't explain it, but I knew it was a baby. Something had just told me, you no, know, we had a baby here. So I went back out there later on that night you know i went back out there later on that night to see what um you know i went back to see for myself so i take my i take my camera out there and i try to see if i can figure out what happened and i looked down there where i went right back to that area and i took a picture and there's the mom female sasquatch laying on top of the laying on the lap of the, the, the other female sasquatch and she looks like she's dying I look over on the corner, and there's the male standing there, and they're holding the baby, and they hold the baby up and show it to me. I snap a picture of it. I didn't get a, you know, a really good picture because they were so far down in the woods, but I was able to see what, you know, I was able to see what they were doing. And um, what's cool about this story is the fact that it was born on Christmas Eve, and you know, and they actually wanted me to see, wanted me to see it because why else would they make all that noise when they don't have to? It could have just zipped through there real quick, but I think she was in labor. I think she was in labor and I think she took off, you know, she took off and um, um, ran through there so I could hear it. So I could basically go find them. And uh, it wasn't until the very next night, um, it was freezing cold. I remember on Christmas Day, it was we had this really, really freezing wind, and I let the dogs out, and I keep hearing it sounds like a baby crying. So, you know, I go back and I keep hearing it. I hear it all day. So that night, when you know there's nobody around, I'll go back out there, and and again, there's the baby crying. So I sit down, I get my I get my phone out, and I start recording, and I record this baby crying. And, um, you know, it was so amazing. It was so amazing to the fact that, you know, they let me hear that baby and they made sure I heard it. You know, they wanted me to hear it and it was so freezing cold, but I could see them back there. I was like, why are y'all back here in this cold? You know, they could be somewhere else, but they were sitting back there with that baby wanting me to hear it. And, uh, I can, now I can understand it because it was a, you know, a few few 
probably a few weeks later, you know, and, and, it, and all the way up until before I moved, you know, I was having interactions with that child. And it's funny, it's funny that the Sasquatch had showed me this whole story about me finding a Sasquatch on a creek bank, a baby Sasquatch, and me, me raising that baby Sasquatch. So my whole my whole thought was that they, they're going to leave this baby and I'm going to be the one who has to raise it. And luckily that didn't happen. You know, they, um, luckily it didn't happen. They just, they just, uh, uh, you know, wanted me to experience what they were experiencing. And, and that was, like I said, one of the many things they did. I mean, it was probably, a, I would say probably the spring of this past year we're out there, we're out there and and the baby when the young one she's a little bit older now but she's out there she's out there just uh, talking to us yelling at us and um we would we would we would talk back to her and she would respond and um, my little girl would talk to her she would respond and uh and then i turned around like i said I went live on facebook and i told everybody you need to hear this and i still got her to respond you know to that and Again, you know, that's the kind of personal experiences, you know, you get, but, but, you know, I haven't seen that baby up until, you know, I think it was probably, I would say about two months after it was born, I asked them what the baby's name was, and they don't give out names. You can try your best to get them to give out names, but they don't want to, but then they give me the name, and it was Nafiti, you know, it was Nafiti, and uh, I was like, you know, they named their child Nafiti. And then it was like a few days, a few days later, I started going after another one. And then they gave me the mom's name, which was Vontessa. And Vontessa was, uh, Vontessa was another, you know, unique name. But I mean, how many people can say they got, they got two names of two, two, you know, two different Sasquatches, you know, the baby one and the mom one. You know, I'm still not 100% sure which one was the mom. I'm not sure if it was what I call the She-Hulk or it was the other one that lived in the woods because, you know, there were so many females in them woods, you know, you got to, you know, you got to figure, you got to figure out, um, you know, you got to figure out um, which one it might be, but, but who cares, you know, it was just still cool, you know. Oh, me. All right, so. Well, we, I, uh, I was really glad you told this story because I was, had this uh, is a psychic impression or a little dream or something before we started to talk about, you know, uh, female Sasquatch and their children are afraid of, of humans. You know, they hide from humans. And that's something to really, that's like a message that, that the Sasquatch people hide from humans. But on the other hand, they really want us to know that they have family units. They have a mother and child. You know, you can look at the first uh, patterson Gimlin film, and that was a Patty, a female Sasquatch. And then there's another video that shows uh, one of the best videos of a Sasquatch that I've ever seen was that one where the, the mother is walking behind these rocks, and she picks up the little baby Sasquatch and, and walks along. And, and then stories like this where they want you to know they want human. They want. They want the mankind to know that they have families. They have babies, and they care about their children. You know, and I think that's a great message. I mean, we we got to know that this is these are people, and they're people just like we are. Who have you know? They love their children, and they name their children. So that's why I think this is a real important story. All this kind of to counteract the, the you know the dumb animal or the you know, the wood ape kind of a thing. They're most people. Yeah, most of the ones, the, most of the ones that I got to know and the most of the ones I see, most the still. It's usually the male, the female, and the children. You know, there's usually what you call, you know, the alpha group, which is you, you see, but it's still the male, the female, and the children. There's never no, you know, you know, and, and it's on, they're like people, I kid you not. When you look at the two giants, the two biggest ones, they kept their cells together. Everybody else followed them. But when you see them together, that was the two that would be together. And then all the females. And, you know, it was so unique because 
you see the giant there, and then you see the female beside of him, sitting beside of him, and then the children are sitting below her. And uh, and the good thing was, you know, in those woods, I would interact with more females. It got to where I was interacting with so many different females. Every time I go out there, that's what I would see. And it seemed like the females wanted to 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 get my attention more than the males. And I and I thought that was funny. Because, you know, the males were the ones that I was trying to get pictures of. I wanted that big giant. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's it, again, like I said, the story, because you look, at the, you look at the story itself, the day it happens, you know, really, really don't, it's, it's significant for us, but it really don't mean nothing because we don't know if that, you know, if that's the exact day, you know, or whatever, but but to see Christmas Eve and then, like I said, I've got such a vivid, vivid detail of that smell. I mean, you think they, where did the candy smell come from? And I mean, how did they, how was it that strong that it was all over the woods? So they, yeah, I've, I've heard a, too. You think it was a paranormal kind of a thing? Like the way the Sasquatch can project a, a, a skunk smell? You think this exactly. is like Exactly. I think the female... Uh, I've heard of other females who've been able to put out like a flower, real strong flower fair smell. So that may be what it, that could be what it was. It kind of like a candy type flower smell, but it was a real, I mean, it was a real candy type smell. And, and, uh, you know, just to hear that noise, I mean, just to hear that ruckus, I mean, you could see who, whatever, whoever and whatever it was was coming through that fast and they didn't have time to, they didn't have time to basically zip through there like a ghost. They had to, they had to get through there fast, and they ran through there. They didn't, and I think it was done on purpose. It was done to show me. It was done to show me and let me experience it the same way. The same way I hear them when they're stomping through the woods, walking through the woods. They want me to hear that, and they want me to hear that because they want me to. They want me to know that they're real. They're not, you know. You know, you see, here's some books. Some people say they're ghosts. They're not ghosts. I mean, the main thing they've always told me, the main thing they've always told me was, you know, we walk with the ghost, but unlike the ghost, we can come out physically. We can hang around with the dead, but we can come out, you know, and that makes sense because when they originally came into my woods, you know, there was ghosts and crazy weird stuff all in those woods when they first came in. And again, you got to keep in mind who, who's maintaining that dimension to keep all that stuff out. You know, from what I understand, the person that was drawing it in was me. <laughs> so I was drawing it in in my sleep. And, and, you know, when the portal got open, you know, and the Bigfoot's come into the woods, then everything else came with it. And, um, uh, I'll never forget making, making, you know, being out there in the beginning, making one, you know, out there taking pictures and they didn't like it. And one, one of this evil looking things, I mean, it didn't look, it looked more like a demon. It didn't look like a Sasquatch. And, and that sucker threw a lightning bolt at me. I mean, I kid you not, we're out there and the lightning bolt just goes right by my head and goes and hits the pole. And I need to find that picture. I got a picture of it. So when I tell you, tell you that story, I can show you the actual picture of it. And I've, I've actually had so much. I mean, it, I've got to go back to my Facebook page and go back and go back and go back and find this stuff because I don't have it anymore on my, it may be on my computer somewhere, but they, you're talking about thousands of pictures and, you know, just for the look for that one. And that's what happens sometimes. I have to go back and find, like somebody wanted to see the ballerina picture. And you know when I tell you that, that when I tell you that they uh, they thought I was uh, when I told them I thought it was too evil out here. <laughs> the very next day it was ballerinas and ballerinas and they had only do this stuff because I could see it. You know if the neighbors across the street looked at the, looked at it they wouldn't see it. If uh, you know, I looked out my window, I could see it. If I come out the door, it wouldn't be there. But if I went back inside and looked, it would be there. And they did that stuff in the beginning. But like I said, when they started giving me visions and started, you know, started um, getting into a personal way with me, all that stuff stopped. Well, let me, let me ask you a question about the, that, the baby and the mother. 
Right. That was in your near your old house last last Christmas. But you right. you moved now, and uh, but you've been able to go out into the in the woods a little bit. Have you still have you seen that same mother and child and uh, family unit? At first I didn't, but then I'm then I'm uh I'm at this new place, you know, where I'm living now, I don't you know, they're all around here. They're they that night time. I found a random footprint out in the yard, you know, and I've even woke up before and seen one standing right above me in the standing in my room, you know, two different spots in my room where he was at. So I know they're they stay with me all the time and I can see them out there, but I'm so done with I'm so done with the uh, taking pictures from the windows and I'm done with that. I'm 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 more now going to be in nature. I want to be out there with them in their environment. That's where I want to be now. And it, it's a change from where I was at before. Something happened to me in between because I tell my wife one day I said I got to get back to the woods. They're drawing me. They're pulling me to the woods. And then I find this place and and probably the second or third trip out there, I look over there across that pond and there's the baby. And there's the mom, the baby. And I tell them, I said, you're too far away. I can't get a good picture of you there. So the very next day I come back and they were all sitting there in the, in the area where I could get a better picture. But I haven't, I know they're up there. They were probably the last ones that left, you know, because I think, I I was believing I was believing that they were you know was part of that land down there and I thought maybe they were tied to that land and it wasn't until I started seeing the white sasquatches and I started seeing the giant ones and I started seeing the the black one with the white face then I started realizing it took them a little while but they're all up here so they followed me I mean you're talking about maybe a hundred sasquatches left one area and came where they knew where I was going to be at from now on. And, you know, it's, it's, it, it blows me away because I go out there every day. I mean, every other day. And um, every other day when I go out there, I only get, you know, I get a different set of pictures every time I go out there. It's never the same. And sometimes I can go out there as I'm walking and I can start telling them who I want to see. And the next thing I know, I'll get around the corner and now they are. So it's gone from it's gone from you know having these having these uh you know um you know having these calls through when I'm asleep trying to call them out and ask them are they gonna come now I just walk around out there and I say you know is a giant out here you know it was one random day I was in the house I said I haven't seen the she hulk lately and then we go out there and there she is and. So they listen to me. They listen to probably listen to everything I say all the time. Yeah, they're listening. They're, they're listening now. They're listening to me. Exactly. That's the they, thing. That's the thing. Like, uh, I I like that message because I wish that the rest of the researchers would understand that whenever they're on uh, YouTube or whenever they're doing their they're out in the woods, the Sasquatch are listening because they can be standing right next to you and 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 they want they want to know what's going on because we're 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 presenting the Sasquatch to the world in a way. That's kind of why I believe at some point one's going to walk out to me and he's going to give me that picture, this, the million dollar picture. He's, they're going to give it to me. But you know what I'm going to do with it? I'm just going to share it. Do you know why? Because like I was telling some dude, I said, they know your intentions or they won't let you have that picture. If your intent is goodwill to spread their message, they're, that's why they give me so many good pictures. You know, I don't, I can go watch even, you know, I can go watch most everybody out there that do these pictures. And this is not bragging or nothing. It's just something. Nobody gets the face shots like I get. I mean, uh-huh. and some days, some days though, you know, the other day it was more like I didn't get much. So it was more about exercise. But it rained that day, and I—I I don't know why. I, I learned from living down there where I used to. If it rains or it's gonna rain, you won't see them. They just—they just go and they disappear or they stay cloaked all day. They don't come out, and um, they don't come out if it rains. And then, then you know, yesterday it rained early, but it didn't rain. You know, but I still wound up with a couple of really good pictures, and. Um, 
Well, let's, let's, let's get to the next thing we were talking about before we get off track. Well, that, that was, I was just going to move it, segue, segue into that. And, sure. Uh, and I was going to do it this way. Uh, because because uh, before we started our, our interview, we talked about how there's some people on the internet who are talking about how the Sasquatch kill dogs and eat the dogs. Right. I got up here. Can you see this on your screen? This is yeah. Yeah, that's my boys. I, that's my boys. Oh, I see yeah. him, yeah. And you got a story about your dogs playing with the Sasquatch uh, and having an interaction with them, and the Sasquatch, your dogs are still there. Nobody ate them yet. So you want to, well, tell, you want to tell that story? Well, when we were, when I noticed something about when they would be sitting across, sometimes they would be sitting across the road. They'd be sitting, sitting they have their own little seat. They'd see me out there, and I'd be taking pictures of the dogs because I just like doing it. I could get some good action shots of the dogs, and I'd notice they'd be out there watching, and they'd be smiling. So I'm thinking, you know, why does everybody think that they're mean? And then, 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 you know, then it happens. Whisper, my white one runs down into the woods where one's sleeping, and he gives her the biggest roar, and she comes running out of those woods. Uh, she does it a second time and he, and he roars at her again. So I let them out real late at night. Sometimes I take the camera out there and I just see if they would, you know, they would come out, you know, and interact with the dogs. And there's one night I'm, there's one night I'm out there and I let them out the door and yeah, yeah, that's, that's her. <laughs> she crazy, but I'm out there. Um, I let her out and they all, you know, they all, every time you let them out, they're running as fast as they can to that fence because there's a German shepherd up there. So they're taking off up there. But this one day they come around that corner and then they see that, that Sasquatch standing there and they turn and she jumps. I kid you not. She jumped five to six feet up in the air and, and went into him like sideways. When she did, he fell because he was standing on some sticks. And uh, yeah, that's that female. I mean, that's that female that they like to play with, you know. But but she uh, she slammed right into him. And my whole, my whole, you're talking about a whole big time worry because here's five or six dogs out here. I think I had six at the time. They're all out there. That thing is fell, the, the Sasquatch has fell down. They're all ver converging into that area. And I'm thinking to myself, all the rest of them are out here. Am I going to have them come out and kill my dogs? Because they just not worn down. And um, so I start, I start panicking and I try to get them all back in the house. So I run them all back in the house and, and I come back and I notice he had moved. He had got away. He had moved back a little bit further back, but he was still out there. And I was... When he first fell, I was two feet from him. I could see him plain as day, and he was—he wasn't—he wasn't one of the—he um, wasn't one of the really big ones. But 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 he's sitting over. He slides back and he sits back over and back in the woods. I get the dogs back in, so the next day I go back out there to investigate, and uh, I go back out there to investigate, and I look and um, I look and I see. Uh, the big spot where he fell and there's hair there and there's the big worst smell you could smell there. And anytime, you know, when they're laying there physically or sitting around somewhere physically, that stink is there. And, um, you know, I start thinking to myself, if they really wanted to hurt them, that was the time to hurt. Them. And I kid you not that white boxer, she, she wound up with what I call really, really sore ribs because she did not act right for a week after hitting that thing. And um, now I know, you know, now I know, you know, I, well, actually I figured it out, you know, that, you know, he was so big and so powerful when she hit him, it hurt her. I don't think she knocked him down. I think she stumbled, caused him to stumble because if you seen where he was standing, he was standing with her where we had threw a bunch of sticks and a bunch of limbs and stuff. So I think what happened was, they, by them changing direction, it startled him. When she landed into him, he fell because he got surprised because I don't think that would ever happen 
you know, if, uh, if, uh, you know, they don't change direction. If they just run out there to bark at him, he's, he, he, he won't, he won't, he'll just, you know, he'll just back away or, or he'll just stay out there and watch and they won't mess with him. I mean, they know, they, listen, the dogs know. The dogs knew the whole time they were out there. The dogs would walk out there and it was kind of like a, and it still is, it's kind of like a, um, it's kind of like a bond with the dogs. The dogs know about them. And, the, you know, I've got one dog. If I ask him, does he want to go see him? He wants to go see him. And I just did that the other day. I said, I asked Rocky, I said, you want to go see the Bigfoots? And I kid you not, plain as day, he said, let's go. I mean, plain as day. And then he got mad at me because I wouldn't take him. But I just showed you the, you know, if my dogs can knock one down and they don't react to it, then they don't. They didn't ever feel no threat. But again, whisper a few days later, goes back down there where he was at again, and he he roared at her again. It was like after after um, that happened, he was just telling her to back off. He wouldn't let her come in, come in there. But they got to where they were going down in the woods where the Sasquatch was be. I come out. I went out there one day, and my dogs are down there. It was two of them. They're down there, and the Sasquatch are rubbing them. And they're sitting down there with the Sasquatch. And I had to get them back because I'm like, you know, but they're down there rubbing them. They're not trying to kill them. And, again, I see it again. I mean, countless times I had to get the dogs out of the woods because they started, after that happened, they started going, they started being aware of where they were. And I had one dog, he could go around the yard. He would go around the yard and he'd find every spot where one would be at and he'd pee on it you know, because he knew that's where they would be. And then they got to where they were going, where they were, where they stayed the night before and crapping in that area because they wanted them to step in it or something when they came back. But it's uh, the dogs, it just shows you, you know, but that's not saying, that's not saying that you take a dog into the middle of nowhere and, and you mess with one that might be asleep. And you're invading the you're invading the place. See, they watched me for three years. They watch my dogs. They they that's why I said they like me. they like my dogs. They like me. You know, I think that's a part of the reason why nobody was ever hurt. You know, the dogs were never hurt. This is because, you know, they watched us before they ever interacted with us. So that's what is, that's what's good about. Well, yeah, and, and also you're not one of these people who's afraid of them. And right. It sick their dog, and the dog. If you're afraid, your dog's gonna try to protect you, or go out right. and fight the, the bear or the what. So you know, I think it really, you know, it's for sure they they have killed dogs before, but I really think it has to do with whether you're afraid and whether your dog's afraid, what kind of dog you have, and also you are out there with them, right? So when you hear about the dogs being killed, it's like. The dog runs off at night by himself, chasing, chasing after these people, or yeah, something, or something like that. It, but you're out there with them, you know, and that's a big difference between letting the dogs run wild. It's it's the dogs on, um, you know, the the dogs are crazy anyway. That's what worried me about my boxers is the fact they're crazy and they they don't have no fear. And you would think. You know, but it, they had got to where I was having to get them out of the woods all the time because they were going down there trying to find them. And once they realized they were there, and before that, they kind of knew they were. But until they hit that one, then it then it said, wait a minute, we know they're here. So they got to where every time that we'd go out there, they'd be sniffing around looking for them. And it kind of got a, it kind of, kind of was driving me crazy because then you, then you think, well, now they're looking for them, and I'm looking, for, and I'm looking for them. Then I don't need them coming out there while I'm out there because next thing I know, you know, they'll be down there in the woods messing with them. And and again, when I seen them down there, I thought, you know, that white one was going to be killed, and 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 then she's down there getting rubbed by one of them. And you know, I think that them them knocking that one down was kind of a bond bond bonding thing. I mean, there's also a picture I got. And I and I, I don't know how it happened, but I'm taking a picture. I'm out there looking, and it looks like another dog, a big furry. I mean, almost looks like a bear type dog. Is right there beside Whisper, and they're looking at each other. And 
some people would try to tell me that that, that 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 there wasn't nothing there. They couldn't see it, but I see it plain as day. It's a, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a um, white and black face on a short snout dog, but it's like a really big furry dog. And I thought maybe maybe they're bringing that dog out to meet my dog. You know that's why it was there. Maybe they've got their own dogs. You know I could believe it. You know if they if they got the same people as we got and they got. There's another picture too. It it flips me out. It's like the, the baby's the baby the young baby. I got a picture of the young baby where the baby's got looks like a toy dragon. Now where did they get it from? I didn't, I mean it looked like a dragon, like a, either a baby dragon or a toy dragon. And I try my best to figure that picture out, but you know I I got to where now I just. You know, I got to where now, you know, um, I just look at those pictures and I go for the main best one. I don't go for everything else that's in it. And But we had a picture a few days ago that we had a picture a few days ago that was just, you know, to me, wasn't really great quality, but it showed something. You know, I basically caught, caught the Sasquatches having sex. And you basically caught three females in there. No, doing you're you're, you're <laughs> absolutely right. I think that, that Sasquatch, so that's what can do anything that humans can do. Because I've heard stories. Exactly. I've heard stories, accounts of, of them wearing shirts. Obviously, they had a found a shirt somewhere and when they, they had fit them. And another story of them uh, wearing coveralls. Now, that doesn't mean they all do that, but it doesn't mean they can't. So everything I, that can do, uh, the, the Sasquatch will do. When I first saw that, that, um, that, that 18 foot one, when he first started coming in my woods, that's why I, I, I figured he was their leader because when I first saw him, he had some kind of like, some kind of like gear on his shoulder, it almost like shoulder pads that had stuff on it. But I don't know if they made it, but he looked, he looked more like royalty versus the rest of them. And what it was was he was showing me when he came there, he was showing me how, he was showing me how important he was versus the rest of them. You know, that really, really big giant, he just seemed like he he wanted to hang around, but the the the, the other guy he was the, he's the main one, and you know I still want to get him. I still want a picture of that dude. I want I want to get him the way I originally saw him. The first time I ever saw that dude, I saw him standing out there. That's the first time he ever showed himself to me, and that was the first Bigfoot I ever seen. And I know that's the one I want a picture of. In fact, the first one I see. It's the first one that after, after all these years I still want to get a picture of. You know, it ain't the rest of them. It's just that one, you know, because he's what I call the classic giant. Well, let's, let's, let's wind this down and leave it like that. Okay. And let's give him a little bit of a tease of something you might be talking about that next. You're talking about having a uh, – they communicate with you at night and in visions and uh, with telepathy. So you've been having things right along happen to you, right? Yeah. So we're, well – it starts. It starts. It starts too with you find sticks and you find sticks outside. You find um, sticks made out of letters, and then you try to figure out what it was. And the next thing I know, this usually would happen between three, four, maybe between four and five o'clock in the morning. They usually would come to me before they before sunset. And I would wake up and I would either be with them or I would be other places, but they've taken me places. They've showed me things. I've been in front of the, I've been in front of the um, elders before I've, I've been in a room surrounded by Sasquatch elders. I've also been at one of their grave sites. I've seen what their graves look like. I mean, they've showed me and they've showed me where they are from. I mean, I've got so many different, you know, we can talk on this for probably two hours. Yeah, that's, that's a good enough teaser, uh, but I think that would be a good show because you got a lot of material, and uh, and people need to know that it's not just people. There's that's not just beings in the woods. Because they come into your dreams, they come into your, uh, you know, your dream time, and 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 they give you visions. I, I've had visions when I'm wide awake walking down the street. So. That's a good a good topic for another show. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy because it sometimes it would be visions of situations, and sometimes I would be physically somewhere else, and I would be out there walking with them in the woods, 
I'd be walking with them in the woods and they're talking to me. And then there's some days I wake up they and I know I was there with them, but I couldn't remember anything. And the next thing I know, I've got all this knowledge. And I'm, for some reason, they gave me not just, they didn't just give me what they're about, but they also gave me all this knowledge, you know, spiritual knowledge and, and this kindness and goodness that I can spread to other people. And this is just, now it's become what my life is about. You know, my life is about, you know, and going out there, again, going out there to those woods, where I live at right now is not a good place as far as, you know, I don't really want to leave my house. That's where I'm at. But my goal, my goal is at some point, I'm going to have me a cabin somewhere out there with the Sasquatch. I'm not going to stay, you know, my life go, my life quest now is to be where they're at. And eventually that's, eventually that's going to happen, you know, let's, let's, but. Let's leave it at that. All right. I was going to go on all night. I think this is a really good. <laughs> yeah. I thought we needed to. One is that there are family units and they, they're, they're real, uh, you know, mother and child. And that was a great story. And, and that they don't necessarily have to eat your dog. Your dog can play with them and they can play with the dog. So that's a really good message uh, to, to end it on. So thanks. Exactly. And uh, I'll talk to you. Uh, Talk to you again soon, all right? Okay, man. Good.